What's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome to Test Drive. This is Blue White Mechanized Production. Let me set everything up the way I like it. There we go. Gotcha. Still want to send it? Feel free to send it, Gibbage. I'm doing an extra long stream on Friday, so. Let me uh, make this music a little bit quieter in my ear. There we go. Alrighty, we're gonna have some fun today. Uh, this is a deck I did a deck deck on last week, uh, but I didn't get to stream it thanks to Thanksgiving, and uh, I really want to stream it today. So this is basically a deck built around mechanized production. We make a lot of treasures with treasure map, spell swindle, and then we win with mechanized production. Now in game two, we have a much different kind of outlook. If they uh, board in a bunch of removal against mechanized production. We board in, approach the second sun, and win that way. Basically, it's a very, kind of a transformative deck here. Uh, we can kind of go from production to an approach, basically without much hassle uh, in the main board here. Uh, but let's go over it real quick. We have two Opt, we have three Sensor, two Essence Scatter, uh, two Search for Escanta, four Treasure Map, four Supreme Will, three Anointed Procession, two Cast Out, two Excellence Binding, two Settle the Wreckage, four Mechanized Production, four, uh, three Fumigate, and three Spell Swindle. Then in the sideboard, three Authority of the Consoles, two Aether Meltdown, two more Essence Scatter, four Negate, one Disallow, and three Approach. So basically, just a blue-white control deck uh, that's going to win with Mechanized Production in Game 1. And then in Game 2, if we really need some uh, slowdown with like Authority, or if we want to use Approach, we can definitely do that. Uh, but let's get right into it. This second is... Oh, thanks, Mies. Play here. Revel and Riches, uh, we could do Revel and Riches that way too. Uh, that is one way to do like a blue, blue black Revel and Riches deck. Uh, I do like the mechanized production a little bit better. Um, I think either way, you'll be using enchantments. So I just like the ability of white having a little bit more board removal uh, than black at the moment. Uh, the spot removal in black is better though. Let's see what we have here. Opening hand looks decent. We do have a uh, Essence Scatter Sensor and Treasure Map. I think this is going to be a keep thanks to the Treasure Map here. We are on the draw, though, so hope to get into a uh, land on the draw. Really need some tacos right now. <laughs> it is night here in Greece. Nice. Oop. Yeah, just there. Drowned Catacombs. Okay, so this might be blue-black control, perhaps. Essence Scatter coming in. We're going to lay out an island here. Maybe hold up a sensor cycling for this uh, next turn. As soon as they see the foliage, they will scoop. <laughs> Well, the thing is, every time I've done a test, like, not a test drive, but, like, a practice round today, I've run up against uh, blue-white control and blue-white approach. So, Field of Ruin, Drowned Catacombs. Let's see, we're going to draw into a plains here. It's got a Glacial Fortress. Uh, we can try for a treasure map here. This might get censored or uh, negated. This is basically just to see if this is a uh, control strategy. This looks like a control strategy. Yeah, there's a sensor. Okay, so we're playing up against blue-black control, apparently. You have an Esper list that is similar. Nice. All right. Opponent has five cards in hand, two lands in the battlefield, three. Here's an Esper list here. <laughs> just talking about Esper. All right, let's see. Going into our draw phase here, it's got a land... Yeah, and two mana available to them. Uh, the two essence scatters are going to be really terrible for us now. However, if they do have Scarab God, that is going to help us a lot against that. But now we just uh, we just kind of hold on and see what we can do. What's up, Summer? Oh, it's Summer Olaf. The uh, you want to turn one win? <laughs> I'm not going to get that from this deck. Let's get a Plains out here. We could try for Annoying Procession, but we really need to keep up. Hmm. For a turn five Scarab God. So let's uh, let's do that. If we get into a lot of control strategy, it's going to be a lot of uh, land pass for the turn. Here's a Glimmer of Genius. We could use that for a Sensor here. I think that's fair. Getting rid of their card advantage is key in these matchups, so we open up a uh, Essence Scatter here in our hand. So if they do have a turn 5 Scarab God, we will, uh, they do not. Sweet. That's good for us. Let's get into a draw here. We have Mechanized Production now. 
Really need some lands. We're going to pass turn here. Opponent has four cards in hand. I'm assuming another Glimmer or a card draw of some sort in this instep. Let's see what happens. I might want to fill the ruin on Glacial Fortress. I don't know. Mirror match as far as control is concerned, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Field of Ruin the Glacial Fortress. They're trying to uh, get some better mana going. Shuffle their deck. Getting a swamp there. Yeah, we grabbed a uh, play or island out of that. Fetid Pool's coming in tap, so that means they still do not have a uh, five mana Scarab God play. Let's get out a Plains here. Now we'll use a Spell Swindle instead of a uh, Essence Scatter if we need to. See four cards in hand. Against the control strategy, it's um, you know, it's just more of a waiting game. We want to be very patient. Let's see opponent is passing turn here. We have opt in hand now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Seven cards in hand. Basically just being patient and seeing what we can do. Opponent drawing six cards in hand. We're gonna try for an opt right here. Uh, put that on the bottom first. Draw into a Fumigate, no problem. Get out an island. Dead chat today somehow. <laughs> Watching two control decks go play, go uh, play, go draw is about as boring as it can get. That's true, absolutely. That's why I don't really like to play control decks on the streams. It's uh, and that's why I don't really like doing uh, deck decks on them because they they can be a lot of fun if you don't go up against a control deck. But for some reason, MPGO like <laughs> a lot of the. Um, the players on MPGO just love control decks. So you're passing here. We have a sensor in hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hmm. Let's see. We're gonna have to discard a card anyway. One, two, three, four, five, six. They can play a seventh. We'll want to... Looks like get rid of Anointed Procession. That seems to be the card here. To get rid of. Sensor might be coming in, or staying in our hand if we uh, have to deal with a... Yeah. Opponent's trying to get enough mana to play out a... Uh, Scare of God, then in a gate, looks like. Supreme Will getting into our hand here. Essence Scatter might be the next discard gibbage, you're right. Although Fumigate is kind of a good idea for us, but it really depends on what kind of archetype this uh, control deck is based on. Again, I'm going to pass here, and uh, looks like I'm going to discard a Essence Scatter. Let's see this, I draw here. Supreme Will. Yeah, we'll let that happen. That's fine. I have noticed MTGO has a lot of control players lately. It's because control is basically on the fringes right now. Um, there are a lot of really great cards for control, but the deck really hasn't taken off yet. Blue Black Control made it to the Pro Tour, and Blue White Control as well did. Um, and there was also a Jeskai Approach, right? I can't remember off the top of my head. Let's see, eight cards in our opponent's hand. They're going to have to discard as well. Ixon's Binding here. Do they have Fumigate? So we're basically looking for a opportunity to uh, discard each other's, or play counter wars. So he's really looking for another mana. That's a Bantony. Yeah, we really only need one scatter, I, I can agree with that. I think Fumigate is the next to go here, honestly. Spell Swindle is our way to win. Excellent Binding is great for us too. Uh, we're going to uh, get rid of a Fumigate. Yeah, it gives me a thing. Yeah, we got rid of the Fumigate there. I really hope uh, we don't hit another control deck after this match. It's just uh, a really boring uh, setup. Opponent is passing turn here. Let's try for a Supreme Will at the end step. Let's see. We're going to grab a uh, Ipni Rivulet. Get that out. That's going to kind of signal, hey, we might have a Godfrey's Gift strategy going. Or an approach strategy. So. 
and kind of play around with that. Uh, then we're just going to pass. Hello, hello, it came in late. What is going on here? <laughs> Caleb, this is a blue-white control, blue-white mechanized production against, looks like an Esper control list. I'm not really sure exactly what deck they're using. If you hit another control match on the next one, just scoop until you find something fun. <laughs> uh, Givage, that's, that's true. We might do that. This opponent is uh, being very boring right now. Of course, we're being very boring too. We have a search for Escanza here we could try and uh, get out. Let's see if they'll let us do that. Basically, all I'm doing here is like I'm just uh, playing chicken with their uh, their their uh, ma their hand. So if they have a negate for this, that's great. They may just they may just let it hit, but I doubt it. Let's see three. Ooh, cancel. Three mana cancel. Fancy, fancy. Let's see, we have a uh, spell swindle here we can actually try to use. But I think we want to actually just let that happen. No problem. Look at that fancy cancel. Nice. Tis the season for control. <laughs> I mean, you know, everybody's you know on their, on their break right now still, kind of, right? Let's see, seven cards in hand. Two, four, six, yeah, seven men on the battlefield. I'm thinking this might be Esper approach. Let's get out of planes here. Hmm. Again, I'm gonna pass. It's just not in our best opportunity right now to use a mechanized production on anything. We could cycle the sensor or the cast out, but it might be good to keep those into our hand. But yeah, this is a really boring matchup here for us. Not much for us to do. Let's see, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana. Opponent has seven cards in hand, really looking for something. Even Revealer coming into ours as well. I have 35 cards in the deck, he has 38, so I guess we could deck ourselves if we need to, right? <laughs> uh, we're going to pass turn here. Again, the mirror match is one of the most grueling matches of the entire uh, meta right now. Looking for a supreme will here. Let's see, we could go for a spell spin if we wanted to, because we would have. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, one, two. We would have enough for two for next turn. So I think we just want to have this happen. When it comes to a counter match, you lose since you are five and his are two, three. Yeah. That's true, absolutely. Uh, that's why we, we want to wait for whatever his condition is to when the game happens. So if he has a. Uh, like approach. Here's a Dovin Bond. We can try for a cast out here. And then go for a spell swindle if he has a follow up play. Let's see if this is going to happen. It does happen, okay. Alright. That might signal to me that they have another, uh, they have a cast out in their hand or an excellent binding, perhaps, after uh, this play here. That would be, you know, tapping them out completely, giving us the ability to uh, do whatever we want. Search for Ascanza. Let's play that out. See if that's going to hit. <laughs> Casting out your cast out. Yeah, I've had somebody cast out my cast out several times. So. Or Ixalan's binding the cast out, so I can't cast out again. Let's see here. Here is a cancel. They have one mana available here, so we're going to go for a, uh, a spell swindle. They cancel, actually. One, two, three. We can actually spell swindle into a spell swindle, so I'm not too upset about it. Because we do get three treasures out of that. So. That's the uh, kind of like advantage of Spell Swindle. Is that it gives us mana right back. So. Getting into three there is actually quite good. We could have played a Mechanized Production there. But I really didn't want to uh, get into a situation where we were completely tapped out. Let's see what we're having here. Tezzeret the Schemer is coming out. We have Ixalan and Binding in our hand. So. I have no problem hitting, letting them hit the board. Let's see what happens here. Okay, making a cell. 
The infamous O-ring loop is one of the coolest MGG videos that are, yeah. See, they have four mana available here. We're going to go for a search here. Put Mega Knight's production door in our graveyard? No, because we don't want to give away anything. Yes, we want to transform. Let's go for... A safe Ixalan's Binding with a Spell Swindle available to us. So we, I feel like right now we're pretty firmly in the in the, in the lead. Um, we just have to be really careful about the uh, what they have in their hand. So they could have two negates. They could have let's see another cancel or five a spell swindle. Ooh, yeah, we're gonna spell swindle their spell swindle. That does mean that we have nothing but treasure now. Oh, that's awesome. We have eight already. So that means a mechanized production play coming out here. Not this turn, perhaps. Because I'm, I'm assuming that they would have a uh, cast out. Hmm. <laughs> Elliot, this deck looks sick. <laughs> I thought you had a job. Spell Spindle to Spell Spindle. You've already won. Uh, maybe. Uh, we could try for a mechanized production here, but we have to use treasures to do this. Uh, I'm kind of assuming that they're going to have a cast out. So we're going to hold up the search here. And use some treasures. Again, we want to be really careful against the control deck here. So I'm going to be a little bit conservative. Let's just see what happens here. We've got two uh, planeswalkers. Let's see, five, six. Here's an approach. Okay, so we can go for a sensor cast first. And then use Ascanta and see if we can hunt for something with three mana. Of course, this doesn't mean really anything. I'm just kind of making sure that their mana is tapped down. That's fine. Okay. No problem. We got into an Ixalan's Binding our turn. Let's get a Mechanized Production. And then another mechanized production. Basically, all we're doing now is uh, next turn we should be able to win the game. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If they do not have an answer to one of the mechanized productions, if they do, then we just you know we win the next game, the next turn. Uh, but if they have a approach in their hand, then we just lose because we have no way of dealing with it right now, unless Escanta can hunt for it. Yeah, there's the second approach. Let's see, we're gonna hope. One, two. We just wasted a life there for no reason. Let's see. Supreme Will is in our hand. Any order. Yep. So this does mean we have to sacrifice a treasure to do this, but that does shut down the second approach, which means it can't resolve, which means they do not win this turn. No negate up, yeah. So that does slow us down significantly as far as the treasure loop here. But we do have a spell swindle in hand for another uh, play, so I think that's fine. Let's go for a um, yeah, cancel, actually, for this past turn. I think I need some Gideon's Intervention. That would have been a good idea in the actual uh, sideboard. Getting into a Swindle here is going to help us a lot. Opponent's passing turn here. Again, they're wanting to draw into their uh, other approach, which is fine. We're just going to slowly build our hand out and see what we can do. Three cards in our opponent's hand. It's been three turns since the uh, first approach. Just imagine Terran motorboat a treasure chest full of coins. <laughs> what is happening? Very good. Farmlands coming in, cycling to get them another card. Let's see, four mana. Trying for something else. Doesn't look like it. Okay. Alrighty. Supreme Will and Supreme Supreme Will and Spell Swindle. So that basically means that 
We're pretty much ahead right now, as far as counters go. Essence Scatter will be definitely coming out in the sideboard in game two, but I feel like we might just go to game after or go to time in game two, depending on what's happening with our opponent here. They're just drawing and going. I like how you have token, token, artifact treasures. <laughs> yeah, another Supreme Will, so we are. We've got the counters for days. Yeah, they're tokens of tokens. Yeah, look at that. Token, token, artifact. <laughs> Can that be token, 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 artifact? What if I put a, a mechanized production on that token, token? Does it make a token, token, token? Or does it just go on forever? Swindle and approach would be epic. That's what I'm hoping is going to happen here. Of course, we're probably going to be fighting some uh, counter magic, but we have two supreme wills here, so. And the, ma and the mana to do it. Opponent is just biding their time. And a sensor. Man, we've got all the counter magic. We're, we've, you know. One, two, three, four, five, six. They have two more turns, basically, for us before they went, before we win. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Six cards in hand for our opponent. They surely have drawn the approach by now. Alright, here it goes. We're going to spell swindle. One, two, three, four, five mana. Do you have a spell swindle yourself? You're going to Supreme Will. Ooh, ooh, Doctor. You know, we could do a Sensor then a Supreme Will, but... Let's go for a Supreme Will here. That's it! Nice, nice. We would have won after the Spell Swindle resolved. It would have given us uh, seven, right? Yeah, seven treasures, then we would have won on the upkeep. All right. We're in uh, game two here on match one. That was fun. Okay, let's get out the uh, Fumigates. Let's get in the Negates. Actually, let's keep in the Fumigates, because uh, most of the time these decks like to bring in a, uh, a Caracol. Taking out these sensors. Essence Scatter will be taken out. Now what I like to do is I actually like to board in some approach just to throw them off. Because this means they'll be boarding in more... Uh, let's get out the Annoyed Processions here. I think that's good. Terran making a treasure cannon <laughs> firing at his <laughs> arch enemies. The leaf blower man. That's right. It's like the water man. It's the leaf blower man. You could probably out approach him. No creatures in the deck. There are no creatures in the deck, the main board, or the sideboard. So this deck is completely a control strategy. Uh, I'm keeping in the fumigate and settle the wreckage, just basically thinking that they'll have, um, like, Caracol, Scarab God, things like that. Why have creatures when you can play counter spells? Exactly, Kieran. Uh, I think we're good as far as what we have. Why are you countering Supreme Will with a Supreme Will? <laughs> you can literally just pay mana. But that's not the point, Joshua. That's the, the point is to have fun with the counters. We could have done both. It doesn't matter, Joshua. Gah. I know, we could just pay it, but it's, you know. He could have had a, a secondary play, like another Supreme Will, and then we would have been tapped out. So... Or in a, perhaps, perhaps a negate or something. We would have been tapped out and had to use mana. At the same time, it doesn't matter. Uh, search rest cancer, treasure map, two mechanized productions, and a fumigate. Um, this is not a great hand. We do have search and treasure. We're going second, though. So I think this is a keep because we're, we're going second. But this is a, kind of an iffy hand for us. Our opponent mulligan to six. That's really good against a control strategy. Got into a little island there. Let's get out our land and pass. When you first started playing Magic, I despise creatureless decks. I don't despise them anymore, but I just never play them. <laughs> Aw. They're fun. They're, they're not like, you know. Aw, uh, opponent. <laughs> Aw. He was like, you know what? I'm just done. I'm just done. He was, he was tired of it. I guess he didn't get into the, the lands he needed. We'll get a big ol'. One here. Go to game. Whoops, we're in game two actually, or match two. It's uh, one zero, correct? After a drop like that. All right, we're gonna play another round. 
Terran rocket launching the leaf lore while Nuka Bolas is tossing him infinite dragon baby tokens. Terran tribal. Uh, Terran waking up in a bed of treasures next to metallic mimic that also looks like Terran. That's that's awkward, Elliot. That's like a weird existential crisis problem there. Oh man. Power level is over nine thousand. <laughs> oh my gosh. Good luck. Have fun. Opening hand is terrible. Look at that. Look at this opening hand. Last game we had perfect mana every single game. Mulligan. Uh, much. No, not really. Mulligan. You know what? Sure. Opponent Mulligan to six as well. Look at this oh, terrible hand here. Uh, sure. Jeez, Terran. Token tokens with annoyed procession. <laughs> Alright, got a mountain here. Let's get out a Ipni Rivulet and pass turn. Annoyed procession is usually the first card to come out of the uh, main board, just depending on, you know, what kind of match we're playing up against. <clears throat> Earthshaker Kenra, okay. Terran cared so much about his counterspell that he countered a counterspell with another counterspell to prevent that counterspell from countering his counterspell. Exactly. <laughs> What's up, sideboard? It's got haste, so it's coming in with an attack. So it looks like we're playing against probably mono red. Let's see, we're going to planes. Let's go for a uh, planes here. Hold up for a sensor play, uh, but this might be a loss because we have such a terrible hand. Yo, dog, heard you like counter spells. <laughs> and then you're asking me why I hate control. <laughs> oh, man. I think it's fun, but I think it is kind of boring to watch on stream sometimes because uh, it's literally just waiting land pass for like 10 turns and then everything happens in one turn. An explosion of uh, cards. Our opponent passing, or I'm passing to our opponent. Let's see, five cards in our opponent's hand. They get into a land, three lands. Ooh, that means a sensor play might not work. Unless they play like a crasher. Yeah, carry Zev coming out here. Ouch. <laughs> no! Sorry, sushi just arrived. <laughs> That's literally what he just said. Love Susie. Getting in for uh, two here. Do you ever play with Jolt? Uh, I haven't on stream before, no. These decks can have an infinite combo, you know. <laughs> Boredom. <laughs> How much money are you running? I believe in this deck it's 24. Fumigate, that's great for us. Let's get an Ipion Rivulet out here and then pass. His reason for dropping the match seems a little fishy. <laughs> Tearing running a bellowing Agisaur through the library of Lang. What's happening? Buddy trained me his foil search for Ascanta for some commons. I about collapsed in the floor. <laughs> Whoa, Caleb! Do you ever have people you do that with, like, where you trade, like, they have a really good card, then you trade them, like, kind of junk? Like, if they, like, ah, I don't care what it, what's, what it's worth. I do that sometimes, like, because I'm not worried about, like, the, the price of the card sometimes. I just need something. We're going back in time. <laughs> Alright, passing our turn here to our opponent. Opponent is carries up an Earthshaker Kinder. Now, the, the Earthshaker Kinder is going to be really difficult for us to deal with. We do have Scavenger Grounds in the deck, so that's good for us. But it's going to be very difficult. Um, let's see. Another Earthshaker here. Can go for a Supreme Will. It means we're tapped out, though, so... I don't let people do that. I always make sure people get at least the close to equivalent trades in value. That's, that's fair, Josh. I bet Tyrion gets tacos through my game store. <laughs> no, I should have visited him. I was in Florida um, 
earlier this year. Apparently our uh, player we're playing against is, uh, he likes sushi, but it's vegan. So avocado goodness, that's what I'm going to say. Tearing the invaders for a spill, swindling some carry offenders. <laughs> I just give cards away. Life is too short to be greedy. Aw, that's that's cute. <laughs> Kieran, nah, dude. Hazard of the Fervent is unplayable. You should trade it for these here relentless rats. Oh my gosh. Sweet tofu's green onion. Ooh, that's also good. Everything every time I think of a uh, tofu, I think of uh Beast Boy from Teen Titans, like the early 2000s Teen Titans, because like every time he talked about food, he wanted it to be tofu. One of the first vegan superheroes, I guess. Getting in for five, going to ten. Pretty sure we've lost this one. Just have a hard time going up against uh, aggro like this. <laughs> Killer tofu, <laughs> like uh, Doug. I don't think vegans should be allowed to play burn decks. Aw, oh, that's mean. Vegan sushi is... <laughs> it's weird. Seems antithetical. Aw, oh, come on. You can be destructive and also not like meat. Let's see. Two cards in our opponent's hand. I think we have a Fumigate coming up the turn after this turn. If we get into another land this turn. But if we don't, then we're just dead. Pretty sure. Yeah, there's a Bomat Courier. Yeah, I can get in for six next turn. Glacial Fortress. So that does mean we can probably survive next turn. But it's going to be very difficult for us. Would love to get into a Settle the Wreckage, honestly, because a uh, Earthshaker Kinra needs six to reanimate. And if they get into two more mana, they can actually reanimate the Kinra. There's five. Ugh, I think we're dead this turn, actually. Two. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, we're dead. Concede. Sideboard. All right, we're gonna go to uh, game two here. Such a difficult match there. Travis, I wish Jaren was my brother. <laughs> Three dollar donation, Travis. Thank you so much. I'll be your brother. Although I don't know. Like when I was a kid, my brother and I fought constantly. <laughs> we would do that thing where um. We would fight over, uh, like, objects, like, oh, this is mine. and Or, like, we would go on, like, car, ri car rides, you know, like, vacations. And I'd be like, can I borrow your Game Boy? And he'd be like, no! I'm like, I'm not going to run away with it. Like, I'm not going to jump out the window like a ninja, you know? <laughs> I do like Sensor in this matchup because they'll be curving out pretty effectively. Um, let's take out some productions, get in some approach. The production's play here is going to be a no-go, basically, in this situation. We basically have to uh, fight them on the ground, so. Let's get out of Supreme Will. I think that's... Annoying Possessions are also coming out here. Three, bringing in... Ops. I think we're good. I can't imagine Terran fighting. It's like vegan sushi shouldn't have. <laughs> okay, but what if you were a ninja and a thief? Ooh. Terran confirmed ninja. <laughs> All right, we're done here. We're going to play approach this this uh, this game. Call Mara. All right. Play first? Yes. Let's see what we can do here. We have one mana in hand. But we have authority, so... I want to keep this so bad. I want to be greedy and keep this, but we can't. Two mana, a treasure map, Aether Meltdown, and an authority. This is a keep for us. Would love the, the keep on top be a white mana. Glorious End plus Gideon combo. Ouch. Terran settling someone's wreckage while <laughs> staring deeply into a mirage mirror, watching a world where Jace is fully dressed. Ouch. Keep. See what the top card is. Opponent mulligan to six as well. These mulligans are killing us. Oh, he mulliganed to five. Ooh. 
She put the nasty deck blue black discard with Scarab God. We're gonna put them on the bottom there. Can't wait to test it. Nice Halsey. What's up, Jack? Uh, let's get an island here, and then we're going to pass turn. Having authority, treasure, and the Aether Meltdown in hand here is actually quite good for us. Uh, but we really need white mana. We can hit six for our opponent here. Let's see if they have a turn one play. They do not have a turn one play! Nice. Got the Scavenger Grounds and Ithne Rebulay. Let's get out the uh, Scavenger Grounds here. Treasure map. Now, either Meltdown would be a good card for a um, Earthshaker Kendra, as well as a Glorybringer. So we wanted to save this. Um, let me do upkeep trigger on the treasure map here. Have something to do with my brain. <laughs> Elliot's imagination level over 9,000. Over 90,000. Oh, okay. Pass turn. Have you built humans in standard? I have not, Halsey. I've really, like, I've thought about it several times. I thought about making a uh, white-red human stack, like exert human stack, and it never really got there. I should probably revisit that, because I haven't really t looked at it since Ixalans came out, so. Don't know yet. Although my standard decks will be, uh, you know, shrinking as I go into the other formats next week. Humans is pretty sweet. Let's see, opponent has two lands, five cards in hand. <clears throat> Excuse me. Carry Zev. Coming in. Coming in hot. Aether Meltdown does very little against Carry Zev because it creates that 2 1. So, I'm going to use uh, the scry ability here with the treasure map. Let's see what we get here. With love of planes, honestly. What other formats am I going into? Just modern? I'm going to try to get into um, <clears throat> modern. Uh, then Commander, and then uh, I would love to do like on Thursdays, like a uh, dealer's choice, so like we can do whatever we want. Glacier Fortress is perfect here. Let's go for an Authority here, and then pass turn. Um, but also uh, stuff like um, Popper, Vintage, Legacy, would love to do all that kind of stuff. Just want to seriously diversify the format. <clears throat> diversify my, what I'm offering to the uh, the channel. Send Scorched. Commander, yes! Yes! Taryn, are you Ragavan? <laughs> Just curious. Uh, no? Popper. Popper hype? Yes. Do 1v1 commander? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and Popper is definitely on the, on the list. So, commander and uh, modern are going to be like once a week, as well as standard is once a week. And then on Thursdays, it's going to be like a dealer's choice, like what I, whatever I feel like, basically, for the week. Like if there's another cool uh, standard deck that's really hot right now. It's super hot right now. Like I would probably uh, grab that. Looks like opponent's just wanting to attack out here. Popper inside out. Duck tech. Ooh. We do gain a life from this. Delver? Yeah, I would love to do a Delver. Hey, do you know what's super hot right now? Bird Tribal. Ooh, I really need to like do Bird Tribal on on the channel. Delt doesn't mind you visit, visiting the Commander Realm. So hot right now. Well, yeah, I mean, there's you know, Delt's good. We're good friends, man. I'm gonna do a treasure map here. Let's see what we draw into. It's kind of early to have this into our hand, but we can put it in there. Let's draw into it, get an Ithne Reveal layout, hold up an Aether Meltdown, and then pass. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we have now, basically, is a great way to shut down our opponent with Carry Zev. Whenever they attack with Carry Zev, it makes the 2-1, um, which gives us a life, and Carry Zev does a point of damage, so it just, n you know, nullifies everything. Oh, for Rampaging Ferocidon. That is... awful. Actually. Hmm. Now we want to get into a, a Subtle Wreckage or Fumigate right now. Super Raptor Series, see what Strategies Rivals is going to bring. I kind of want to see something that will improve graveyard decks. Hmm. Not God for his gift stuff, but other strats. Kieran, there really wasn't anything with graveyard interaction in Ixalan, so I don't really think they'll have it in the next set. 
Um, Dominaria, though, I'm sure there'll be something in that. So look out for that. But I don't really, I don't think that they'll have anything too impactful to the graveyard. Maybe, maybe not. But I, I'm, I'm not hopeful for that at all. Yeah, Dominaria, I'm super excited about that. Imagine Jolt fighting with Terran, tossing Terran, some Hallowed Fountains, and Terran tossing some approaches. Yeah. We'd love to do a 1v1 with uh, Jolt on this on the stream if we could get it. Or or uh, just a video if we could get it. So we don't gain life, but we do shut down the, uh, the token here. We will be taking one damage this turn. Would love to get into a Fumigate, honestly. Let's see. Pawn has three cards in hand. Pirates have a mini reanimator theme going. Oh, that's true. They march the drowned and stuff like that. Hmm. So yeah, I guess it's not impossible. Yeah, you're right, Josh. I kind of forgot about that completely. Gonna do a treasure map here. Come on, Fumigate. Come on, Annie. Rampaging Frostodon is going to shut down our strategy. Be super annoying. Bottom the sensor there. Draw into an Ipni Rivale. We have enough for a Spell Swindle, which is fine. As well as an Aether Meltdown. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we can do both if we wanted to. And Aether Meltdown has Flash, so. But would hate to use Aether Meltdown against a Rampaging Frostodon. That just seems awful. Travel spells need to be a thing again. That would be amazing if it was. I would love that to be a, a thing. We want fairies back? Maybe in Dominaria. Carry Zev here. Hmm. Why recast Carry Zev? It's just going to uh, come in tapped. Oh, because they're dealing one damage. Well, it's dealing one damage to him. That seems like a not a good idea. Is that a punt on our opponent's behalf there? It looks like a punt. Okay. That's strange. Yeah, it deals one damage to them. All this dust, reprint authority? All this dust, reprint. Gotcha. <laughs> Didn't they try travel spells uh, with arcane? I can't remember that. Getting in for three here. Yes. It's probably the last I will take of that before I will uh, use Aether Meltdown. Let's see, two cards in our opponent's hand, three mana available. Alright, getting into an Essence Scatter here. We're going to sack a treasure and draw a card. Come on, Fumigate. Or Settle. I'm okay with either. Another treasure map. We could play that out. Hold up a Nest and Scatter. And a Spell Swindle. Put that on the bottom. Or hold up a Nest and Scatter and an Aether Meltdown. Sorry, not Spell Swindle. Because we don't want to cast an approach, uh, because then we won't gain any life from it, so. Maybe he has Hazard in hand, that's true. If he has Hazard in hand, then we'll be at using Essence Scatter here, since we just drew into it. I think that's pretty fair. Let's see here. There it is. Essence Scatter. And then Aether Meltdown on uh, Rampaging Ferocidon. Looks likely. Yeah, let's do that. Until we get into a uh, Fumigate. Stormcrow reprint? Yeah! <laughs> Obviously, some new Street Birds would be well appreciated. Yeah. It pretends to be a Mechanized nice Production deck, then sideboards and approach. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, man. 
The origins of the Stormcrow mean? Never understood it. Say no to Hazaret complete. <laughs> they can get in for one this turn. They also lose one life when they do that, thanks to uh, Rampaging Ferocidon. Let's go for a Scry here. Let's see. But honestly, love, on top, please. Hmm. They can use Rem Remnant Bruins. We have a Spell Swindle available to us, so it's not like we're dead next turn. We'll definitely be hurting. Stormcrow is the best card in the game. <laughs> you can't beat Stormcrow. I usually scoop. <laughs> Only problem is that it dies to Doomblade. Oh, dies to removal. It's not good. Let's see here. Spell Swindle is going to give us some uh, traction for a Treasure Cove play. Would love another Hazret counter, or maybe a Glorybringer counter. But we'll see what happens. Might just be... Yeah, here's a Strike hitting me for three. I don't think I can stand for that. <clears throat> Let's do a spell swindle, get two treasures off that. Soul Scar Mage, no problem. They do lose one life thanks to that. Okay. We're not we're not dead yet, but we are dying. <laughs> Crow Storm. I wish it was legal and modern. <laughs> Scavenger Grounds. Okay. Zero cards in their hand now. They're basically top decking. <clears throat> Gonna go to attacks here. Hit me for one. Taking three, going to five, I believe. They lose another point of damage thanks to Rampaging Ferocidon. Come on. There's 47 cards in the deck. Five of them are Fumigate and Settle. Would love a Settle, honestly. But Fumigate will do. But I love either, honestly. If we draw into a cast out, we actually would be not too bad off because we could get rid of a Carry Zev. And then they can only do two damage to us with the, um, or one damage to us thanks to Soul Scar. And then they just have to rely on maybe pulling into a Lightning Strike or a Sock or something like that. Now, Ramen Up Ruins can, of course, ping me for two the next two turns. That's already four damage. So, I still think we're dead, but we do have chances here. Just got to see what's happening. I'm going to sack a uh, treasure here to draw a card during all this. <laughs> Second approach. Nice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Ah, uh, so close. Could do approach, approach. That's actually not terrible, but uh, I don't think we have the turns for it. Okay. Let's draw. Yes. Woo! All right. We have Fumigate. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Fumigate. Nice. That does give us a few turns. Going to use the uh, treasure map here to scry. Bottom that. 
Then uh, we're going to draw a card here. Three mana up. Got into an opt, which isn't terrible. All right. Now they're top decking. <sighs> we just win now, I believe. If they have, if so, if they have, let's see. One, two, three, four. They can Ramip Ruins me for two. Oh, man. I really hope they don't get into anything important for this, this, this top deck. Oh, man. Are they passing? Are they passing? Are you passing? Are you passing? You're passing! <sighs> Alright, we're in the game. Okay. Alright, let's, uh, let's get an island out. We're going to... Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We're going to approach. Gain 7 life. And then next turn we win. Oh my gosh. Guys, we did it. We came back. We came back. We're back in the game, boys. We're going to a turn three. Or game three. Oh my gosh. Opponent already conceding, but we're going to play out the match. Oh, that was so close. We came back from the brink of death with that, with that Fumigate. Now, Settle would have done the job as well. Um, you know, we're gaining life with that, thanks to Bomat coming in. <sighs> but yeah, that was such a close game, guys. Wow. And call it a comeback. <laughs> All right. Let's see, a Rampaging Ferocidon. I don't, I do not care. I do not care, Rampaging Frostodon. We win the game with the approach on the, on this play. So close. I mean, like, that top deck really made it for us. The Treasure Coves really helped us to draw into it. So, let's get into the draw here. We got a Plains. We're just gonna... Get out of approach and win. Oh my god. Game three. Let's go to sideboard here. Whew! I'm all tingly. Alright. Update my listings here. Um, I'm really not, like, interested in playing anything else, really. I think uh, what we have currently is great. Probably Spell Swindle coming out would be okay. I do think the treasures, though, were really important for the treasure maps. Um... Supreme Will could be coming in. Negate could be coming in. But I think overall, what we have... I think I'm, I want to get out Opt. I think I want to take out Opt and bring in two Negates. I think that's fair, because Opt is really just a dead card to us most of the time. If you don't get into it early enough. And we really need the, uh, the Negate power over Opt. Thanks to things like... Uh, well, let's take out one opt and put in the disallow. Take out the negate, putting in the supreme will. I think that's better. Because that's a straight out, right? Counter versus a uh, counter against a strike. Let's submit that. Oh! It's going to be three, mat uh, three matches. Yeah, we're going to try and do one more match after this one. And that'll probably do it for the day, since this is a control deck. So, play that upkeep loose. Should have scryed the to the top on upkeep. <laughs> Yeah. Let's see. Two lands. Essence Scatter, Supreme Will, Authority in our hand. Supreme Will, Swindle, and Approach. This is actually a keep on us because we have Approach in hand. And an Essence Scatter. So if they have a turn one Bomat, then we'll be struggling. They did keep a full hand, though. Shock to the face. Okay. That's fair. Alright, let's undo our upkeep trigger here. Got into a Disallow. Let's get out our Authority. And then uh, next turn, we'll hold up a Nest and Scatter. I'm on Bordeaux Tourism site. One link is... <laughs> what do you feel <laughs> You feel like? Ah, oh, Bordeaux. I know you're French and I'm, we hardly know each other. Oh, man. Ah, uh, Kieran decides this point. Opponent says so much authority. I said if it's in the opening hand, I keep. 
I can't again. I can't not against a, an, an aggro deck like this. All right. Our hand's a little inefficient. Carry Zev coming in here. We do gain a life every time they, that uh, a carry Zev attacks, so we're only taking two instead of three. But a turn two carry Zev is always deadly for us. But uh, having Essence Scatter next turn is going to be great. Four cards in our opponent's hand. See, so we got into a sensor there. Yeah, we're going to do that and pass. <laughs> Elliot, don't concern yourself with such things. Shock to the face, and it's too late. You give magic. Oh, shock to the face, and it's too late. You give magic a bad name. That's that's my best. That's my best Bon Jovi voice. Five cards in hand. Three mana. I want to save. Ooh, Earthshaker Kenra. Yeah, we want to essence scatter that. Now this means I really need to get into a. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a uh, shock to the face again. Jeez, opponent, two cards in their hand. How many matches are we in? How's the deck been performing? Uh, Jeremy, we uh, won the first round, and then we're in the second or first match. We're in the second match right now. Uh, we're in game three. The first match was against a uh, control strategy, a blue uh, Esper control strategy. We won via mechanized production the first game. Then the uh, second game, they just had a terrible hand and they and they dropped. Yeah, Hazret is probably coming down here. We have a sensor for it if that's the case. So I'm not too concerned over that. A lightning strike to the face. A oh my gosh, you have burn for days. That burn is really hurting us right now. Another shock? What is happening? <laughs> oh my god. He's done 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9 damage in just non-creature spells. One card in hand, though. Wow. That hurts so badly. All right, they're going to go into combat here. We're going to let's, uh, Aether Meltdown the uh, carry Zev here. Burn, baby, burn. <laughs> What's up, Radio? If you draw another mana, it's GG. Yeah, we really need to draw another mana. And not ping ourselves with Ipmi Revealer. So Aether Meltdown does lock down carry Zev as far as getting us, pinging us damage. So that means we're only getting two da or one damage now uh, with the monkey. So it does gain us a life. He's not going to attack with it this turn. That's fair. Another approach. Ah, oh, man. Gonna pass here. Really struggling on land right now. Two cards in our opponent's hand. Rampaging Ferocidon. We get to uh, cancel that, or censor it. But we're at nine life. Oh my gosh. We are in pain right now. Technically, it's still a 10 turn clock. 9 turn clock right now, right? Oh man. Not fun. Not fun. Come on, mana. Give me some mana. We've done really well to survive this long, honestly. Turn five, all that shock and lightning strikes. Jesus. Jesus Christo. All right, let's see here. Oh, sweet, sweet man. Thank you. All right, let's uh, let's see what they're going to do this next turn. Uh, we might use the Supreme Well to dig for some stuff. It's like more mana. <laughs> Fourth mana, one card in hand. Going to go for a Hazaret. Chandra, Torch of Defiance. Yeah, we're going to say no to that. Sorry. Could have used Disallow, but we really don't want to uh, lose any more life. Opponent. <laughs> he said, ouch, that hurt. And I was like, so does my life total. <laughs> On the brink of death. 
It's weird that they're not attacking out. They should be attacking out. But they're not. That's good for us. Yeah, the monkey enters tapped and attacking, so they still get in for two. But we do gain one life, so it only does one damage to us. Oh, man. What's up, Bart? Alright, opponent has no cards in hand. They're completely tapped out. <laughs> Very proud of the Bon Jovi thing I did. <laughs> it was nice. Alright, let's see what our opponent says. Yeah. Alright, let's get into... Uh, Let's see, come on. Glacier Fortress, alright, there we go. Now we have a full disallow. That's fine. Alright, now I think I think we're back in the game now, thanks to uh, that. We'd really love one more mana, I think, for a spell swindle. <clears throat> then we could probably go into an approach uh, play in, in full. But, uh, oh my gosh. So stressful. Man, these aggro matches are so stressful. How are you only game three with with only one win and zero? Lo uh, that's that's overall. Like as far as matches, we're uh, match two, game three. This is the second match. In match one, we we did, we did win. Hey Taryn, baby, remember when people were discussing a four color nope deck? <laughs> I made the I made a no fun and loud black white deck. Nice. Okay, one card in our opponent's hand here. Sorry, got it already. Gotcha. Lay to land, okay. That's fine. We could go for an Ipni Reveal I play, but that's really not worth it. Because we have two approaches in our hand, so we really just need the mana. So I think we're fine. Now we're just uh we just gotta hold on loosely. And see what happens. <clears throat> Such a rough go of it with the aggro strategy here. They kept a full basically a full hand of seven that was like <clears throat> a shock, a shock, Earth Shaker, Kenra, a strike. Man, they're out there also at five minutes, so they're getting close to timing out in, mat in game three. All spells, no win con, no deck. <laughs> All right. Got into a planes here. Okay, so we have enough for a spell spindle now. Gonna hit six. All right, we are in super good shape now. Just really need to get into. Uh, yeah, turn one authority, turn two to cut Leona Guard, turn three solemnity, turn four settle the wreckage. Ouch. Alright, opponent has four minutes. One card in hand. Probably want to go for a spell swindle if it's anything over two. If not, we'll just disallow it. Opponent didn't do anything, okay. Might just be a land in hand. Do they think Aether Meltdown means they can't attack with their creature? Not sure. Okay. Let's see. Striking me in the face? Is that what you're about to do? Is that what's happening? Come on, opponent. No? Hmm. Hmm. We do have a treasure map here. Let's go for a treasure map play and uh, hold up a disallow. I think that's pretty fair. That does leave us open to a strike if they decide to hit us to the face. Um, but we'd really like to get out the treasure map to try and get our mana in a situation where we have seven. But our opponent might be timing out. I've never seen an aggro deck actually time out. That's very strange. But if they time out, that means we win. So I'm okay with that. It's just not the, the best way to win because we're, we're so close to using approach and then approach again because we have it in our hand. Oh, man. Opponents just hurt my face a lot, so... Apparently he's just he's eating while he's playing, so it's making him slow. Two cards in our opponent's hand here. Rampaging Frost on. We're going to disallow that. That does mean we're open to another play here. If they have it. They do not have it. Sweet. 
Tell me you're on stream and hurry up. <laughs> All right, let's go for a treasure map here. Let's see what we have on top here. Would like a land, honestly. Sure. Draw into a land. Now we have six lands. Spell Swindle is going to be uh, up for us. Could have gone for a Spell Swindle last turn instead of playing the treasure map to get rid of the Rampaging Frostodon, but we did not know that it had a Rampaging Frostodon. We still wouldn't have been able to recast the second approach, so we still would have been kind of up creek at the moment. Strange things are afoot. Aggro timing out. Not attacking with carries of. Strange things indeed. <laughs> DJ. Oh, that's perfect. Ram up ruins. Okay. Looks like they're just going to be passing, though. Could have saved the disallow for the ram up ruins trigger, but I think we'll be okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, our opponent finally figured it out. Okay. There you go. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six lands. Need one more. Do we dare use treasure map on our upkeep? I believe we do. Okay. Let's use treasure map. Let's see what we get. Land. Give me land. Give me land. Of, of all the times we flooded, give me land. Come on. You know you want to. Opponent. <laughs> Stop eating sushi and let me play. <laughs> Ixlon's binding is hilarious. Um, and I'm not, I don't, oh man, I would really love to get it just because of the, uh, the carry Zev there. But we're doing that. Supreme will. Okay. Next turn we'll use treasure map. One more time, get some treasure tokens. And then we should be able to do an approach and then an approach. So we should be fine. So either way, we win. <clears throat> Our opponent finally figured it out. <laughs> Boom roasted. Harsh Mentor. Uh, what card in our opponent's hand? Let's go for a Spell Swindle here. Just to get some uh, treasure. They may have a follow-up play. Oh, they had a Hazard play. We would have been in a world of hurt there. Coming in tapped, we're getting one point of damage to us. Then we approach, then we approach, and we're, we win. Because we do get two treasure tokens there, so that's enough for uh, an approach and another approach if we don't draw into a land in the next two turns. Approach the spell swindle. <laughs> I'm giving them the old razzle dazzle. All right, let's see. Scry, make some treasures. <clears throat> Excuse me. Scatter. Sure. I'll draw into that. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. All right, we have enough for an essence scatter as well as another approach next turn, so we win. Oh, man. <clears throat> opponent is upset about the second sons, but uh, I uh, I can't help it. It's the way we win the we win the game. All right, we have a supreme will and an essence scatter. Let's see, Hazaret, glory bringer. Ooh, fancy, fancy. About a being, it's gone. We could have actually let it hit the ground if we wanted to, because it comes it comes in tapped. But just on principle, <laughs> we don't want it to hit the battlefield. I want to see you cast approach, a spell swindle, your own approach, then cast a second off the treasure. <laughs> Dalton, that sounds amazing. Can the spell swindle do that? A counter target spell? Yeah, they can. <clears throat> if we had the mana to do that. Yeah, we just cast approach here and win. Wow. Guys, we did it! We made it. Good game. Opponent had 30 seconds on the clock. 
Oh, man. Let me update the listings here. Let's end one more match today, but we're 2-0. and Play one more round. And we won against Aggro there, so... You were saving him the grief of timing out by using the second approach. Exactly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Alrighty. Play first? Yes. Good luck. Have fun. Opening hand. Has three lands, a treasure, and spell swindles. I think this is actually okay. It's not terrible. Opponent said you too. Opponent mulligan to six there. Are they going to keep? Looks like a keep. Gonna untap the uh, unkeep thing and play out our planes and pass. What's up, Jonathan? A true humanitarian. <laughs> Good luck, you'll need it. Aw, break a leg, my leg. Drown catacombs, okay. Is this another control deck here? Gonna get out a treasure map here. Because we went first. <coughs> Excuse me. Have an upkeep trigger here. Do so have an opt in hand for the uh, the game one game plan? Never let a glory bringer hit the other <laughs> the otherwise the table if you can help it. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Break your limbs out there. No, thank you. Let's go for a treasure map here. Glacial fortress on top. Thank you. Let's get into that. Uh, then pass turn. Could go for an opt here, but we kind of want to represent a uh, essence scatter or a negate. Oh, you're fine, never gonna. He's gonna get in for three here. Another Esper list. Let's see, three mana. Sun Scourge Champion. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's go for an opt here. Anointed Procession. Let's actually put that on top because they're tapped out. And draw that. We're going to draw first. Got into an island. Let's go for Anointed Processions here. And then um, do a treasure map. or Not a treasure map. Let's do a... <clears throat> hold up a spell swindle. Jeez, I have a, some stuff in my throat. What is happening? Yeah, pass turn here. Talking to three other people in chat. I do chat support. Gotcha. What uh, what chat support do you do? Is it like um, just software in general, or that sounds like a not very fun job to me. <laughs> oh, playing the Gideon emblem. Okay. That's going to mean we're going to need to have a uh, Ixalan's Binding available to us. Let's go for a Scry here. See if we can get into it. Yes! Oh, the next card. Okay. Let's go for a uh, Ixalan's Binding here. We're still taking uh, five damage per turn, so we really need to be careful <clears throat> at this point. But we'll be getting uh, six tokens to the treasure map. And then uh, playing mechanized production next turn. Using a spell swindle and whatever they want to use. Getting it for five. Looks like Saffron Olive's Esper Aggro. Gotcha. Excellence of Binding really does hurt them a lot. But we really need to see what we can do this next turn. Glorybound Initiate. Ouch. Would love to get into a Fumigate or Settle the Wreckage. Come on. One, two, three, four. Let's do a treasure map here. Scavenger Grounds. We're going to put them on the bottom. Then draw. Nice! Got into a Settle. Okay. And we do have enough for a Spell Swindle if you want to keep that available to us. So we will uh, just pass turn. Oh, man. This deck has, has been so good to us today. Alrighty. We have basically the perfect hand at the moment. They have four cards in their hand. 
If they get into two different counters, then we're out of luck, but we'll see what happens here. Okay. Gonna go for a Settle the Wreckage. Nice, it does hit. Top decking like a Pro Tour player. <laughs> that's right, Josh, that's right. You play long enough, you just you just get it. You get the power. It's like leveling up in a video game. See, so your opponent's gonna play out a Scrap Heap Scrounger. And then play out a Glory Bound. Let's spell one of the glory bound. We have five now. All right, let's uh, draw. Let's see, get into a supreme will. Let's go for a mechanized production. We have another. Spell Swindle available to us, so if they have a cast out or something, we have the ability to deal with it. But next turn, we should just win. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, we, we would have seven. So if we have whatever they cast next turn, we'll have to sp uh, Spell Swindle. Let's see. So if we do a Spell Swindle here, one, two, one, two, three, we actually get one more, and it actually wins us the game. Spell Swindle. Opponent has two cards in hand. We're at five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we win. Nice. He gets into for three here. Opponent has two cards in hand. Doesn't look like they have an answer. And on upkeep, we win. Because we make two things to annoy possession. There we go. Whew, that was a quick one. Let's go to sideboard here. Opponent might be bringing in a lot of... Uh, 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 cast out or Ixlon's Binding. What's the goal? The review lays in the deck. Curious why you don't just play Islands. Josh, those are in there for the Game 2 plan for uh, Approach the Second Sun. So if we need to uh, get some cards out of the way for an Approach, that's why they're there for. They're not, they're definitely, like, they don't make any sense in Game 1. But in Game 2, if we want to bring in Approach, that's what they are there for. Uh, we're going to bring in some Essence Scatters because this is a Esper Aggro list. Bring out the Opt. Looks like we want to bring in Authority. Let's take out the spell swindles. Yeah, we want to we want to basically do what we did last game, which is board into an approach deck. I think that's that's fair. Let's get the aether meltdowns in here. Take out the anointed processions. Yeah, dig for the approach exactly. Um, bring in the disallow. Team master flex. This deck is one of the better ones I've seen on stream. Thanks. Jank equals awesome or success. Yeah. Uh, okay, we're going to submit now. Let's go to game two. Yeah, the deck is, uh, is super good. I really like it a lot. Um, the problem that I did have with it a lot is um, obviously the aggro matchups are the hardest to do. Uh, and then the control matchups. This is a terrible opening hand. We're going to uh, mulligan here. Not much better, honestly. I'll keep it Shh, on top, sure. That was, those were awful hands. Uh, Glacial Fortress. Okay, we're going to draw into a search and then Glacial Fortress ourselves, and then pass. I guess that makes sense. It just seems to be a major hiccup against red. Yeah, Josh, it is a major hiccup against red. Um, I do think, though, in the game two, we are we have a better chance against the aggro strategy. And that's why it's it's kind of there. I think your meltdown against the scrap heap is just hilarious. Honestly. Let's get an MP reveal A. Hmm. We could go for a search here, but I think we want to keep up Essence Scatter or Sensor. Maybe even an Aether Meltdown. We want to be playing around our uh, opponent's creatures. I'm going to skip that song. Oh, we're into the... the <laughs> we, yeah, we're into the Super Mario RPG playlist now. What about Team Energy? Team Energy, I would say, is not too terrible. Uh, because they're more of a tempo-based strategy where they need to play something out every single turn to be good um the turn two long tusk cub is the hardest to deal with obviously 
turn one to two and then turn two long tusk up. That's really difficult for us. Uh, getting him an eighth or, or a scrap heap here. Hmm. Taking three is okay. You could have won just by swinging every turn. You could tell opponent that after the game. <laughs> Super late, but I see no punts and a 2-0 record. <laughs> Am I to believe it? <laughs> yeah, Crispy. Yeah, we did, we've did. we done pretty good today. Watch me make a punt now. Let's see. Opponent is passing turn here. We're going to uh, Aether Meltdown. The uh, Scrappy. Let's see if he has a sensor for that. He does not. So that shuts down his Scrappy Scrounger. Did not get into a land here, but we're going to hold up some sensors and essence scatters. Let's see here. I was drawing into seven cards now. Looks like a cast out cycle. Not bad. Aether Meltdown is not even worth it to uh, cast out, so they got into a land there, so that's what they were waiting on, looks like. Uh, a sensor on the Sunscorched Champion seems likely. Let's go for that. They're also tapped out, so we uh, seem to be safe for a search for Ascan to play next turn. Would love to get into some mana, please. There's a settle. Let's go for a search here. And pass. Now we will be uh, letting whatever hits us hit us as far as uh, the next play. Tap land. Maybe another Sun Scourge. They could also just uh, make a Sun Scourge in the next turn with a reanimation. All right, we have enough keep trigger for search. Put cast out into our graveyard. We really need the mana, so yes. Got into the island there. Nice. Uh, pass turn. Actually hit five for the instep. Let's see if they're gonna have anything for the sensor to get rid of. Nope. Okay. Just thinking they're going to use a uh, sun scourge champion here. Looks like. Duress? Ow! Oh, no. Ouch. That hurts us a lot. I mean, but we have two answers here, so... I mean, there's really nothing they can really grab that's really going to hurt us. Um, Essence Scatter is going to hurt us the most, probably, if they grab that. Because they can play around a sensor, but they can't play around an Essence Scatter. <laughs> what is happening, Kieran? Yeah, they grabbed Essence and Scatter. That's that's fair. Three cards in our graveyard. Looks like opponent is passing turn. Four cards in their hand. Let's see here. I'm gonna yield to this. Fumigate into our graveyard. Yes, we really need the mana. As long as we're getting rewarded with mana every time we do that, I think I'm okay. Supreme Will, end of turn for land. Mm. Mm, would love that. <laughs> Does this work better than a servo version where you put the mechanized production on a cog worker's puzzle knot or something? Uh, Bart, I think... Oh, another duress? Ow! That hurts us so bad, guys. I mean, the only thing I can think they could take is settle the wreckage. No, they take fumigate. Okay. Wow. That was a top deck, back to back. That hurt. Um, I think this works a little better because the treasure tokens, like, you can use them for mana if you need to, uh, which also ramps you, so I think that's a little bit better. They have less to interact with as well, so... I mean, raids can kill it, obviously, because it's an artifact, but... Like, if it's a servo, then the servos can be fumigated or whatever. Let's see, treasure map into the graveyard. Hmm. Let's see. No. And play out a treasure map. That might be a misplay for us, but we'll see what happens. I really want to try and get as much advantage as we can. Negate coming in here. Hmm. Yeah, that's fine. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we will have a uh, Ascanta flip next turn. One, two, three, four, four. Giving us five mana. Whoops. Hit a button. Let me scooch this over so I don't do that. There we go. Cycling sensor seems pretty good. <clears throat> yeah, I think so too now, at this point in the match. Yeah, Angel Sanctions. Let's just cycle the sensor away. 
Got into an island. That's not bad. Just gonna grab the search for Ascansa or the Aether Meltdown. Which one would you grab? Search? Yeah. Would actually like to get into a uh, scavenger grounds to get rid of these embalmed creatures. And the eternalized creatures. Let's see if we get into a plains. So we do have Settle the Wreckage available to us. If they decide to attack out. Two cards in our opponent's hand. This is like 99% GG zone. Let's see if they decide to attack out here. Okay, if they have Negate in hand, then we are, you know, out of luck. But if they don't, we get, yeah, these two back. Okay. That's good because Angel of Sanctions is terrible for us. Another Angel of Sanctions in hand? Oh, okay. Well, nothing I can do about that. I have six land. Thanks this island in our hand. Two mana available to them. We're going to try for a cast out here while they have two mana available. They One card in hand. Yeah, we're going to grab it. Thank you. Get our search back. Pass turn. Back to work. Good luck. See you later, DJ. Let's see what we can do here. Two cards in hand. Gifted Aetherborn play. Not bad. He really wants that Ascanta. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Two Fumigate are in the graveyard. We have another Fumigate in the deck and one more settle, so. Let's see. Put Glacial Fortress into your graveyard. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. And transform, yes. We're gonna melt down the glory bound. So yes, Kanta can be a target now if it's a land, so. <laughs> the sting goes... I love that video, guys. Okay. Sunscourge Champion is coming in now. So we really need a Settle or a Fumigate as soon as possible. Someone take the carry of a machine away from Kieran. <laughs> Yeah, I can, I can tell. I can tell. What did we do in game one? I was out for some munchies. We went to, we, I mean, game one is our uh, mechanized production. So we, we did that for sure. Let's go for a treasure map here. Then a scry. You'll put that on top, sure. Uh, and then the, in game two, we boarded into the approach to the second sun. So, is Kieran channeling the scat, man? I'm a scat man. Skibbity bidi. He's gonna get in for six this turn, so it's really gonna hurt us. We might want to do uh Ascanta here. Let's see if we can get into an approach. Binding does help us, so let's grab that. We can get rid of the uh, Sun Scourge Champion or the Gift of Aetherborn. Sun Scourge Champion might be the target unless we get into a fumigate scrap heap scrounger okay scrap heap scrounger is also in the graveyard too <laughs> well one two three four one two three let's go for a uh, treasure map scry here put that on top that's fine let's go for a binding on the champion or the scrap heap. Let's see. We would take six. Hmm. Hmm. Zero cards in our opponent's hand, so they're top decking for sure. If they, we don't grab something this turn, we will be uh, dead. I think grabbing the, the champion. It's worth it. They don't have anything else in the graveyard to bring Scrap Heap Scrounger back. Yeah, let's just grab the champion here. While that doesn't give us anything, we will be gra going into a approach next turn. Um, just pray where they don't draw into a negate for the life gain, because it's very important for us right now. So. 
Getting in for five, I would assume. Yeah. Use search on upkeep two. I'm not going to use it this next turn because we're drawing into the uh, approach. All right. Four, five. Do you have a negate? Did you draw into a negate? You did not. Okay, good. We could have used a treasure map there, but I was too excited. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna put a punt counter. Boom! There we go. Should have used a, a, the uh, treasure map there to uh, get us three uh, treasures, and we could use them for the approach as well. <laughs> Gauncy Lord of Luxury does hunt four down, so that is true. Ixalan's Binding, I feel like, is going to be hitting uh, Scrap Heap Scrounger this next turn. <laughs> I'm not a rapper. Alright, let's see here. Get a six. Let's see. Gonna go Binding on the uh, Scrap Heap. Cancel actually. Actually, we're going to use this for uh, scry, put that on the bottom. Then use this. Actually, going to hit cancel first. Alright. Alright, we're probably going to use that Kanta this next turn uh, to grab the search. Because he picked the four, then I picked the fifth. And so it's the, the next draw or the next draw. So we don't want to draw into it right now because we could do a sorcery duress. So he's going to attack out for four this turn, dropping me down to two. Pretty much getting paid to watch magic right now. <laughs> My dream has come true. <laughs> nice. Going down to two. Opponent has one card in hand. Okay, let's go for a search. Two approaches, <laughs> nice. Gonna grab an approach, put it into our hand. Pass turn. Yep, that's it. Nice. We 2 0 there. Oh man, that was awesome. We actually went 3 0 today. Very cool. One punt though, because I did punt on that little upkeep trigger there. What's up? Nice blue white me mechanized production man. It's a good deck. I really like it. It's a janky build, but it's a fun janky build, you know. Terrence, since you've done Azurius and Mono Blue Flyers, will you make also blue red flyers too, or was it has it or was it already done? I uh, haven't done that yet. I don't believe, uh, but we may we may come back to it. Taren, Kieran is tilting me. <laughs> nice job, Taren. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate it. Ah oh, man, this is a fun deck. Even though it's you know the first match was against a control strategy, and the second match was you know aggro. Um, those are the two hardest matches in the, in the, I guess, the meta at the moment. Would have liked to have gone up against a Teamer Energy deck, though, but we did not do that. So, did like what we went up against, though. Had fun. We you stream the Discord deck tomorrow? Uh, I will be streaming the um, Demir Colossus deck tomorrow, I believe. <clears throat> and then the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and then the Discord deck is on Thursday. So, I'm trying to, like, slowly catch up, but I'm also making videos, like, as well, so... 3-0, wow. <laughs> it was approach control, so I can't honestly say I enjoyed it. <laughs> also, I think I saw someone on Channel Fire, but I did a video with Grixis Thopter Tribal. Pretty sure they stole the idea from me. <laughs> nice, Josh. Demir, yeah. Flawless victory. Exactly. Oh, man, guys. Oh, that, that's it for today. Like the video if you liked it, of course. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I stream Monday through Friday at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time right here on the channel. Oh, man. Love this. Love you guys. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Later.